I am so excited about this video. <laughs> I'm so excited about this video. Recently, I designed a website that had this wave as the bottom edge for the hero. Nothing new or revolutionary here. You've probably seen on a thousand sites before, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to code that out and for some added flair, how to animate it. Let's go. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. Okay, so. Okay, let's code this puppy out. Let's start with the hero image at the top. Don't worry about the animation. We'll just keep it simple for right now. What's the best way to build this? What about a JPEG? This is a large hero image, so we need to be cognizant of the file size. Uh, JPEG is gonna give us the best compression, but in order to get that wavy line at the bottom, we're gonna have to bake in, um, bake that into the image. I'm not crazy about that. This could pose a problem. It might limit the design or, for example, you're working with a content management system and you're asking a client who may or may not be a designer to upload these images, they're gonna have to create that curved bottom themselves. Not exactly ideal. A ping might work. That would definitely solve our transparency problem, but the file size would be Plus, we'd run into the same problem if you're using a content management system. A designer would have to format all of your images for you. Hmm. What other options do we have? I'd use an SVG. SVGs are like illustrator files for the web. They're vector files based on numbers and math. Not really great for photos, but we could use this with a JPEG. We'll export a rectangular photo without the curve and then export an SVG as a mask to only show the parts of the image that we want. Let's set it up. We'll start with Figma. I'm gonna take a desktop size artboard and then I'm gonna grab my pen tool and draw a shape. Then let's remove the stroke, add a fill, and then just to be precise, I'm gonna make this 440, 595, and we want this to line up. Let's make sure the shape is selected, and then I'm going to go to export, change this to SVG, click on the export button. Now I'm gonna save that to my desktop. To keep this simple, I'm gonna build this within CodePen. Let's load our image first. I have a pro CodePen account, so I'm gonna click on the assets button and upload the image. This is just a picture that I downloaded from Unsplash. Credits will be in the description below. So I'm gonna select that file. I'm gonna click on the copy as button and say copy as an image tag. So I'm gonna paste that into the HTML. Sweet, our picture is huge. So let's add a quick style to limit the width. Okay, great, that gets rid of the horizontal scrolling. Now for the SVG, remember an SVG is just text and math. Let's open the file within VS Code. We wanna select all that code and hit copy, and then paste that into CodePen. If you scroll down, you'll see our large image and then our SVG. All the assets are there, we just need to make it look good. So let's take a look, closer look at our SVG. This top part here is pretty easy to read. We can see an SVG tag with a width and height attributes. There's a view box that uses numbers that match up with the width and height. And there's a path tag with some crazy numbers and then I'll try to bring some clarity. If I wanna resize the SVG, I'll modify the height and width values. I err on the side of don't touch the view box. Yes, it corresponds with the width and height, but it's what allows the SVG to help maintain its aspect ratio. Things start to get a little crazy when you change those values. And for the path, those crazy numbers is the math that defines the points for our SVG. We created those with our pen tool in Figma. And then fill is the color. You could change the color, but this is a math, so it really doesn't matter what the color is since we're not gonna see it anyways. Let's wrap our path tag with another tag to tell the browser that we want to use our SVG as a mask. So I'm gonna say clip path, and then we'll close it down here. This looks similar to HTML. Now, if you scroll down, 
you won't see the SVG anymore. Let's put an ID on the clip path to make it easy to grab. Now we need to tell our image that we want to use that as a mask. In the CSS, we can add a property called clip path and inside we'll reference the ID that we put in our SVG. Awesome, now if you look around, you'll notice the curve is appearing at the bottom of the image. There's still a lot of scrolling. This is because our image is this big. It's just being masked out and this is an easy fix. Let's limit the height of the image to 595. Uh, now the image is distorted. All good, we can add another property called object fit cover. And this is similar to background size cover, except for images. This will allow the image to fill the area as best it can. This was so easy. Let's ump the ante though and add our animation. This is going to involve animating those points within our path tag. Ew. All good. There's actually a library called GreenSock that will make this super easy. GreenSock has been around for a really long time since the days of flash animation. And it's pretty much the go-to for any type of JavaScript animation that you see on the web. If you click on products and the navigation and then scroll down, they have a plugin called Morph SVG, which is exactly what we wanna do. We wanna create another SVG and have our animation morph in between the two. Okay, let's jump back over to Figma and the animation is gonna be a lot smoother and more predictable if we're working with the same number of points. So I'm gonna duplicate the desktop artboard and then I'm gonna shift this bottom curve Take this 595 and export this same as before. Open it within VS Code. It's the same size as our previous animation. So we actually want to include this within our previous SVG definition. All we really need is this path. So I'm gonna copy and paste. And then I'm gonna put it inside that SVG tag. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see it right below our photo. Let's add an ID to our new path to make it easier to target. We'll call it Morph Shape. I'm gonna change the visibility within CSS to hide it. So I'm gonna say Morph Shape, visibility is hidden. Now if you scroll down, you won't see it anymore. The visibility property hides the item, but it doesn't take it out of the DOM. Hold up. DOM stands for Document Object Model. It just defines the logical structure of elements on the page, how it's accessed and manipulated. In our case, SVG is still part of the DOM. It's still part of the structure of the page. You can't see it, but you can still see where it takes up space on the page. It's kind of like just changing the opacity to zero. This is easy enough to fix though. We can give the entire SVG a position of absolute, which will pull the SVG out of the DOM. Voila, no more scrolling. Now we just need to animate between the two. Then CodePen, I'm gonna add the green sock library. You can click on the gear icon next to JS and we wanna search for green sock. Click on it and that'll add it. And then we just need to add our morph SVG plugin. So let's go to green socks documentation and then click on installation you'll see there's actually a section if we scroll on down specifically for code pin. And you'll see here that it says that we just need to fork their green sock starter code pin. Well, we don't really need to fork this since we already have our own pin, but it does give us the link that we need. So for Morph SVG, we can copy this and we can go back to our pin and paste it here. So I'm gonna hit save and close. Let's go back to the green sock documentation and find the page on morph SVG. If you scroll down a bit, there's a section here called how does it work? There's a demo here. So you can see it morphs in between the two items. This line is the heart of our animation. It's just saying that we have a starting shape, our circle, and we want to morph it into this hippo. This is our second state. So I'm gonna copy this line and go back to our code pen and I'm gonna paste in this JavaScript. We already added an ID to our clip path, but not the actual path inside. So I'm gonna add an ID here and call this path. Now we can swap out their IDs with ours. So I'm gonna say path and morph shape. Now if we make our code view small and hit refresh, you'll see that our animation does work. 
It runs the animation once as soon as the page loads and then it stops. But we want it to keep repeating. In order to have that kind of control, we need to go back over to Greensock and use their timeline. So let's look at the timeline documentation. Let's come back up and we'll click on timeline. At the top of the page, there are a couple examples. Here it says without timelines, there will be delays. With timelines though, it's cleaner and more versatile. And that's what we want. And their example uses a repeat. So let's just grab that code. I'm gonna copy and paste that into our JS. This creates a variable called TL, short for timeline. And that gives us a way to reference our timeline so that we can go back and add things to our timeline. So I can add this property to our timeline. You can see it repeated twice and then that's because this says repeat twice. I'm gonna change this to negative one so that it will repeat forever. And then we can remove that repeat delay. Okay, so this works, except it's starting over at the beginning each time. We want to animate it forward and backwards. If we flip back over to our green sock documentation, there's a method called yo-yo that does exactly what we want. You scroll down, you can set it on the timeline or you can pass it in as part of the timeline configuration. Okay, since we're already passing in repeat as part of the configuration, I'm gonna add yo-yo there. It's in our code pen. I'm gonna say yo-yo is true. Just a couple more things to tighten this up. Right now our animation is kind of bouncing around. If you Google green sock easing, you can go to this older page on green sock site that gives you some visualization to how easing works. If you hit the run button and watch the green dot, you can see how it speeds up and slows down. There are lots of options here. If you click on sign and then change the out to in and out, that's what we're looking for. Uh, this is basically the same as power one. This follows the basic laws of physics. An object will start slow as it's trying to gain momentum and then it'll go faster until the end when it rolls to a stop. As you can see from the bottom of the sample page, it gives you the code that we need to add with an R2 method. I'm going to say ease, power one and out. Our animation is looking nice and fluid, but it's still going too fast. You can get the timing just the way you want it by adjusting the duration. I'm going to change this to seven. Much better. We could slow it down even more so that it's not distracting. And of course you could adjust the code to only animate when the user scrolls. But before we call it quits, there's just one more piece I wanted to fix. What about responsive? This looks fine if we make the window smaller, but what about larger? You can see the edge of our SVG. What do we do about this? First, we need to add a clip path units attribute to our clip path. So clip paths unit. Could use percentages for SVGs, but that's gonna get crazy. Remember all those weird numbers in the view box that I told you to never touch? Well, turning everything into percentages would mean taking all the X values and dividing that by 1440, since that's our width, it's the horizontal value, and then taking all of our Y points and dividing that by 595, since that's our Y or our vertical value. Ugh. <laughs> Ooh, this sounds miserable. We've made it this far and I'm not gonna let you down now. Instead, let's put a transform attribute on our clip path. I'm gonna just say transform and we're gonna scale. The X value needs to be a percentage. So I'm gonna say 1440 since that's the width or the horizontal, the X value. I'm gonna say one divided by 1440. And I can copy this directly from my calculator, paste that guy in. And I'm gonna do the same thing for Y, except this time I'm gonna use 595. So one divided by 595. Copy and paste. Now that you can see that our SVG takes up the entire window and our animation is still working. Done. This one was a doozy, but the end result was pretty great. In the description below, I'll include a link to the code pin. Feel free to fork it or snag the code inside. If you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you wanna receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.